once a year they set out on their journey to a unique, spectacular destination. Their flight reveals landscapes that few have ever had a chance to see. Austria's easternmost lake lies at the heart of a jungle. An impenetrable jungle of reeds. A bird's eye view provides merely a hint of what is concealed below. Birds. Birds as far as the eye can see. The brightly plumed ones stand out, as do their darkest relatives. But all the shades in between blend into the greeny-brown backdrop of the reeds that surround the westernmost steppe lake on the Eurasian continent. Explorers venturing into this maze need sturdy waders and, above all, a good sense of direction. Otherwise, they'll quickly lose their way. The local inhabitants won't help. After all, they can hardly know that the intruders are on their side. The scientist is just visiting to collect data. The reed bed is a monoculture, one single species, perfectly suited to wetlands. Their stems ceaselessly seek out water, and every spring the new shoots color the reed bed an enticing green. The reeds would expand forever, if the lake allowed them to. But at a certain depth, the reeds surrender to the power of the wind and the waves. The reed bed saves the lake shore from erosion while it extracts nutrients from the water. Between the reeds, the water is clear. Towards the edge of the reed bed, it becomes cloudy. Further out on the lake, pondweed grows in brackish water. Swirling groundwater washes salt out of the soil. Wind stirs up the silt on the lake bed, making the water permanently cloudy. On the land side, there's no natural barrier against the reeds. And yet, in some areas, they've been cleared by an ancient domestic breed, Hungarian grey cattle. Their leisurely rumination is more effective than any mower. And Hungarian raka sheep can be relied on to finish the job. They don't need a huge appetite. Collectively, they devastate the reed shoots. The National Park uses the grazers to control the reeds along the eastern and southern shores of the lake.
they've created horizontal, open grassland. The world of the reeds is vertical, and its inhabitants are, of necessity, acrobats. Perches aren't to be trusted. Come spring, the birds that have found footing burst into song. Savvy's warblers, sedge warblers, Eurasian reed warblers, great reed warblers, and the other reed inhabitants all seek out mates. The birds compete with each other furiously. Sometimes even with a full beak. The Eastern Alps are still covered in snow as a Western Marsh Harrier arrives at his breeding grounds. The Harrier is a bird of prey, similar in size to a buzzard. In spring, Harriers engage in extravagant courtship rituals. The lighter colored male attempts to impress the female with his flights of fancy. Once a partner is found, the pair begin to build a nest among the reeds. Construction materials are gathered in from the surrounding area. Dry, sturdy sticks, reeds and grasses are used to build a nest that can withstand storms and give protection to eggs and chicks. The marsh harriers make their nest in the densest part of the reed beds. It must be as invisible and as inaccessible as possible. The pastures nearby are often underwater. The vegetation is sparse and the water is salty. This could be a mudflat or a lagoon, or a coastal landscape about 300 kilometers from the nearest ocean. The pied avocet really belongs on sea coasts or around river mouths. Along the shores of the North Sea and Lake Neusiedl, this wader uses its upturned bill to find food. The black-winged stilt is also adapted to coastal life. It vanished from Lake Neusiedl for more than a century but breeding pairs began to return in the 1990s. The reed beds are the backdrop for natural events usually witnessed on ocean shores, like the mating of the pied avocets. If the male expects to succeed, he must persevere and make all the right gestures. The courtship of the black-winged stilt is even more delightful. Round 
started off by an elegant, graceful balancing act. If it weren't for biology, there might be talk of love. Anyone can catch this courtship ritual along the edges of the lake, as long as they're an early riser. But the most important natural spectacle is way away, in an area rarely visited by humans. The great bird colony lies close to Austria's border with Hungary. Innumerable white dots mark the location of great egret nests. There are hundreds of breeding pairs here. No one is allowed near the breeding colony, not even national park rangers. This is a unique glimpse of the very heart of the reserve. The elusive egrets are the symbol of Lake Neusiedl. Their nesting places are perfectly hidden and difficult to reach, even by boat. True wilderness, untouched for centuries. The dark birds among the egrets are pygmy cormorants recent arrivals here. They suddenly appeared in Austria for the first time in 2007. This is Europe's second largest continuous reed bed after the Danube Delta, and it lies just 50 kilometers from Austria's capital, Vienna. The pied avocets begin to brood in the open spaces beyond the reed bed. Their eggs are well camouflaged and potential predators will be visible from a distance. But there are other dangers here. These black-winged stilts have placed all their eggs in one basket. A single heavy shower could flood their island nest and undo all their work. This is the time of year when one of the area's shyest birds leaves the protection of the reeds. The grey lag goose is the mascot of Lake Neusiedl National Park. Greylag geese usually take flight if they sense a rapid movement a hundred meters away. Now, however, their timidity has vanished and they venture out into the human world. Their mission, to find food for their young. Grasses and herbs don't grow in the reeds. The geese must gather them along the nearby roads and paths. A 
As a result, every spring the Greylag geese are the national park's biggest tourist attraction. The emergence of the geese often distracts from events in the nearby grasslands. A black-winged stilt broods. This would be the perfect nesting place if it weren't for the neighbors. The northern lapwing can be the neighbor from hell. Particularly when it has offspring, the young are often undisciplined and unruly. The lapwing doesn't like the stilts being near its chicks. It's hardly the stilt's fault if the baby lapwings venture too close to their nest. But innocent until proven guilty isn't a concept that the lapwing understands. In any case, the attacks will fail. After all, what are the stilts to do? They can't move their nest. Naturally, the chicks themselves have no idea of the trouble they've caused. Approaching the lake from the east, sunlight glistens on small bodies of water. They're extremely rare. Several are just a few hundred meters from the reeds around the main lake. But these miniatures are a world of their own. They're seasonal pools with a high salt concentration, and their edges are lined with coastal plants. The salt is a deposit from an ancient sea. These pools are often only knee-deep. They create the coastal, lagoon-like landscape next to the great reed beds in the southeast of the national park. Further north, the renowned Zitzmannsdorfer meadows lie alongside Lake Neusiedl. At first glance, they seem to be merely grassland. A closer look reveals a fascinating variety of species. This diversity comes from the soil. It's partly dry, partly waterlogged, and, more or less, salty. The insects here face similar vertical challenges to the birds in the reeds. They need the same acrobatic skills in a habitat constantly buffeted by the wind. Rare butterflies inhabit this borderland between pasture and reeds. One caterpillar devotes its entire life to the reeds. The moth it will eventually become is known as the silky wainscot. These caterpillars do most of their eating at night. In the morning, they withdraw into the reeds themselves. What goes in one end eventually comes out the other. In autumn, the caterpillars enter the reed one last time. They pupate to survive the winter. Next year, they'll emerge among the reeds as moths.
As night falls, millions of insects emerge from the reed bed. With each beat of its wings, the tiger moth raises its temperature until it's ready to fly. The reed tussock moth also warms up. Like its many relatives, this moth's lifespan is limited to a few weeks in the summer. The nesting place of the Western Marsh Harrier is one of the reed's best kept secrets. Its location is only revealed when the adult bird returns from the hunt. Four offspring and just one mouse. At this rate, the parents will have to make a lot of trips. The storm has claimed several victims in the salty pools and on the flooded meadows. A one centimeter rise in water level is enough to destroy many nests. The steppe landscape around Lake Neusiedl is by no means flat. There are damp valleys, shady areas, and hot terraces. These small differences can be a matter of life and death. The black-winged stilts are lucky. Their offspring are true children of the reeds, well camouflaged and almost invisible. six-legged monster emerges, bearing a passing resemblance to a pied avocet. The young avocets use their parents' feathers as a warm, comfortable nursery. are becoming quite proficient at seeking out food. Pied avocets are born with a straight beak. The characteristic upturned bill that helps them scoop and sift for food develops over time. The quest for breakfast is exciting. But early mornings are also tiring. A short nap never hurt anyone. no place like home. Few people know that the dense reed beds circle bodies of water that are almost completely cut off from the main lake. These pools are not easily accessible. The cloudy lake water can't penetrate this far. In summer, these pools can become so shallow and warm that oxygen begins to run out. Rotting reeds color the water brown, and there are no fish to be found.
The underwater world in these pools is bizarre and has never been captured on film. It's a difficult existence for the plants below the surface. Sometimes they're entirely covered in a layer of silt. In this inhospitable habitat, the beautiful blossoms of the bladderwort provide this strange world with a splash of color. Some of the channels through the reeds are man-made. They were cut by professional fishermen to traverse the vast expanse of reeds. Unlike the pools, these channels are subject to the wind and waves. There's no shortage of oxygen here. In some places that are protected from the wind, the water is as clear as glass and teeming with life. There are nurseries for fish and a paradise for insect larvae and snails. The Western Marsh Harriers are hunting again. Their offspring are constantly hungry. Hovering over the dense reeds, the adults scan ceaselessly for birds and mice. Somewhere below, their nest is a dry island in a swampy green ocean. The Harriers occasionally check if the young are safe even if they have nothing to offer. The chicks have no idea of the world beyond the nest, having seen only the sky and the wall of reeds that surround them. Sometimes it's hours before the harriers return. The heat is stifling. The strongest chick grabs the prey, screening it from the others with its wings. There's no way to know when the next food delivery will arrive. The other young birds will just have to wait, although they are starving. At times like this, almost anything looks good enough to eat. This unknown object could be some kind of mouse? Or perhaps not. Maybe there's a mouse hidden behind it. Let's take a look. A hard shell. Maybe it's dried out. Finally, fresh supplies arrive by air. For now, life is good. Then the waiting starts all over again. The light sand covering these fields is visible from the air, 
revealing the national park's most surprising habitat. The Sea Dam is a sandy embankment that stretches for 25 kilometers. It was created by the ice that covers the lake in winter. Pushed up against the eastern shore by the wind over hundreds of years, it took the sand with it. A small miracle, a bone dry strip of sand between waterlogged meadows and swampy reeds. The strip is home to rabbits, an animal you wouldn't expect in the vicinity of a reed bed. The rabbits build warrens up to two meters deep. Some years, they breed in astounding numbers, like rabbits. A closer look reveals the embankment's real treasures, creatures that live modestly along the edges of the paths. These sand wasps are as rare as their habitat. The embankment provides the perfect home for them. They drink nectar from centauri flowers, but these wasps are also sophisticated killers. They hunt insects as large as themselves, paralyzing them with a well-aimed sting. The wasp larvae lie 15 centimeters below the surface of the sand, surrounded by paralyzed victims they will eat alive, one by one. A wasp deposits its next victim in the small hollow, then carefully closes the entrance. Nearby, several female wasps are digging nests for new larvae. Most insects have no chance against the sand wasps. But there are exceptions. <laughs> the wasp's sting seems to have been off target. It's the blowfly's lucky day. Summer here is hot and dry. The reeds tolerate the temperatures. Their roots reach down deep, ensuring there's always enough water, even when levels sink dramatically and the pools begin to dry up. The air shimmers in the heat. The salt pools dry out completely. The evaporating groundwater carries nutrients to the surface. Sometimes the salt gathers like snowdrifts. congregate wherever there's still enough water. They're under the watchful eye of white-tailed eagles. The eagles returned to Lake Neusiedl for the first time in 2003. Now they're regular visitors.
from the eagle's perspective, this could be somewhere in Africa. A flat steppe lake, thousands of birds, and an expansive horizon. In late summer, the land and the reeds seem to breathe again. The heat wave has passed, and a sense of tranquility returns. This is the time of the insect swarms, nourished by water, meadows, and reed bed. Scenes like this, particularly in such beautiful surroundings, have become rare. For decades, these animals virtually disappeared. They achieved an almost mythical status. Now they once again roam the expanse of the reed bed, Noisedal reed deer. The reed deer were once considered a distinct subspecies. Today we know they are conventional red deer. They used to be a common sight around the lake, but as human settlements spread, the animals were driven away. Now they've returned, at least to the southern end of the national park, in the area closed to visitors. The rutting season begins in September, against the backdrop of the reed jungle. The majestic performances of these deer have never been captured on film. Unlike their kin in the mountains, they can move around at will. Rivals are never in danger of being cornered. They can escape in any direction. If necessary, they simply melt away into the reeds. Sitzmannsdorfer meadows are now dry, dusty plains. Mowing the meadows at the right time ensures their continued existence and diversity. The arrival of the starlings marks the beginning of the end of the season. Some of the flocks are so dense, they blot out the sky. In autumn, the reed bed loses vitality. The stems begin to turn brown and brittle. Powerful gusts tear the leaves from the reeds, dropping them in shallow pools to rot and release their nutrients. This time of year, cold, noisedal days bring regular storm warnings.
a storm transforms this shallow, apparently harmless lake into a potentially fatal trap for humans. At times like this, the lake turns into a raging sea. Grazing on the pastures has finished. The cattle avoided the thorny leaves of the field oringo plants. Eventually, the stems snap at their weakest point. The wind that sweeps across the steppe drags the plant away to colonize new areas. They tumble on with every gust, spreading their seeds over great distances. happens in blustery weather. It's a spectacle that's missed by most visitors to the national park. At the beginning of winter, Lake Neusiedl becomes one of Europe's vital rest stops for migratory birds hundreds of thousands begin to arrive. Within a few short weeks, the thousand breeding pairs of grey lag geese already here are joined by up to 50,000 wild geese from the north. By day, they congregate in the fields to find food. When evening comes, peace descends. Until suddenly, as though at some secret signal, huge flocks take off into the sky. The birds seek out the open water where they can spend the night in safety.
the water birds retreat to the middle of the lake until the new dawn. This is the ideal opportunity for park rangers to count the birds. Austrians and Hungarians, each on their own side, will exchange and compare the data they gather. Before dawn, they establish observation posts around one of the salt lakes. The first rays of sun take the edge off the cold air, and the animal world comes to life. The day's first significant sighting a white-tailed eagle on dawn patrol. It's the end of the night's rest for the geese. The eagle flies away, but the water birds are nervous. Dozens take off and fly over the observers. The ornithologists record the species, time of day, the direction they fly, and their numbers. The experts are here to observe. They rarely intervene. These geese have arrived at their feeding grounds. They won't return to the lake until evening. When winter comes, Lake Neusiedl changes almost overnight. Outside the boundaries of the national park, reeds are harvested for profit. In the past, this took place once the lake had frozen over. These days, mechanical harvesters roll through the shallow water. The stems are extremely durable and are sold all over the world for insulation, mats or thatching. help to shape the land that surrounds the lake and the reeds. The National Park seeks a balance between wilderness and cultivation, a refuge for a breathtaking diversity of flora and fauna. The result is a natural habitat unique in Europe, Lake Neusiedl.